welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have the long-awaited MDT Pick Fed Tips video. Now, today, we're going to be discussing all the things that I use that I use to create the MDT Pick Fed. You know, what I use to create Vindication, MDT Live, you know, what you need to get started, you know, where should I start, you know, I just have figures, I have like eight figures, where do I start, I want to do a Pick Fed, all these different things, guys. We're going to cover all of it here today, and I hope, I hope you guys do enjoy. So, let's just go ahead and, and break it down, man. I, I kind of have like a series of bullet points that I'll just kind of randomly go through and we can discuss everything and just kind of, you know, showcase the items. I actually, my wife actually took the camera today. She's actually using the camera today, so I can't show you the camera that I use, but I do have, uh, I'll pull up a picture of it. I'll also include some other alternative options that you can use and I'll try to uh, get everything going for you guys. So let's go ahead and just shut the hell up and dive into it. All right, so I guess the first thing that you need to start off with when starting a pick fed is you need to decide which kind of pick fed that you want to do. Now, when I first started pick fedding, man, there was really only one option, right? There was the classic pick fed where you do matches and all these different things with just some, you know, regular music or just some cool music playing in the background. So when I started pick feds, I actually didn't even know that they existed, which is kind of insanity. But when I started my pick fed, I had this vision that I wanted to create a WWE figure wrestling show, but it'd be completely custom. I wanted to have my own titles, my own, you know, arenas, my own graphics, my own everything. I wanted it to look like you're watching WWE, but it's MDT and it's my own storylines and booking and all of that stuff. So when I first started out, I didn't even know what a pick fed was, which is probably why my posing was absolute dog shit, alright? That's why I wasn't very good. But you need to decide, I guess, I I, I don't want to say I created the genre, but I feel like I at least, I paid some sort of motion forward that got this sort of like commentary brand of pick fedding started here, or at least that I, that I know of. So you have your classic style and you have your commentary style. Now I'll be the one to say there's not a lot of feds out there that do commentary you got me you got g natty you got some other people out there that do it but for the most part there's not a ton of people out there doing the commentary style i would love to see some more people come up in the game and do a commentary fed and put all the the bells and whistles on there if if you will so when i first started out my posing was absolute dog shit because i did not know that classic pick feds existed so once you decide whether you want to do a classic or a commentary fed the first thing that i would talk about guys is going to be lighting now, lighting is very important. I'm going to go ahead and stand this camera up so I can show you guys my lighting. Now, what I use for my lights, guys, I apologize for the weird lighting. It's like because there's so, like I have the lights on in here, but since I guess I'm using these lamps, it's kind of washing everything else out. But I use these tall lamps right here. You guys can see there's like five of them. Again, I don't know why it's so damn dark, but these are like, you can get these at Walmart. I think over the years, I've, I've, I've accumulated like seven of them. I have one, two, three, four, five, and then I have two more in there. I may even have eight or so. But they're these like five head prong lamps and I put white light bulbs in there or daylight bulbs like white light. You don't want the yellow tone, you know, like a standard light bulb is like yellowish. You don't want warm, you want white light or bright light is what it's called, I think. It's either called white light or bright light. I don't know the exact term of it. They're LED white light bulbs and you want to get a lot of those because it gives you that nice clean like Walmart lighting, you know, arena style lighting. You don't want that warm yellow tones coming through there. If you, you know, if that's all you have or that's all you can afford that's perfectly fine to start off but I would recommend good lighting you just want a lot of light in there man you don't want it to be dark and dim because if I can't see what the hell's going on in the ring I don't even want to watch your show really because it's hard to see you know like you want if you want to attract viewers to your fed you're gonna want to have pristine lighting look at all the top feds for the most part they have really good lighting I would say across the board now outside of lighting even if you don't have lighting you can use a window now I know my windows are covered up here but this is a gigantic window that I boarded up you could leave that open and just pull back the curtain and let that daylight shine down on your arena. It could interfere with filming times, but that is something that you could also do. Now, getting into your ring setup. Now, my ring setup, I have two or three different rings, but this is the one that I love to use. This is the Wrestling Superstore ring. I think it's based off the Jack's Real Scale ring. It's perfect size. I love the way it fits. Like, this is a standard Roman Reigns Elite figure. It just, compared to a real WWE wrestling ring, the many shows that I've been to, it looks the most in scale for me. I feel like the authentic scale ring the AEW version, WWE version, doesn't 
doesn't really matter. To me, this one is just the best. It, it looks the most accurate. It just gives you a really good idea of what a wrestling ring looks like compared to the figures. And I feel like the main event ring, like the Raw and SmackDown rings, I think Gene Addy uses it. Balor Figs UK uses it. I feel like those are a little bit too small for my liking. You may use it. If you guys want to use that one, that's perfectly fine. But this is the Jax Real Scale ring from the Wrestling Superstore website. And they have different rope colors you can use. You can even get uh, different turnbuckle post colors. You can do a lot of different stuff. And it's like kind of fully customizable. You can actually do a lot of different things on their website. So you may want to check that out. WrestlingSuperstore.com is where I got this one. Now the canvas is not the Wrestling Superstore version. I actually got a t-shirt and then cut it and then kind of pulled it up under so they would give me my own custom canvas because their canvas kind of sucks ass if you want my on a, uh, honest opinion about it. But there's the main event ring, the authentic scale ring, this Jack's real scale ring. It really doesn't matter what ring you, you have. It's just this is the one that I use and I wanted to tell you guys about it. So there's this one. As far as your stage setup, man, you could use so many different things. I mean, different play sets, WWE action figure play sets, different old school, you know, uh, stages that you can get off eBay. I'll pull up some on the screen so you guys can check those out. You got the SmackDown version. You got the Titan Tribe Live. You could make your own custom one with foam. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Let's go ahead and jump to the other arena. So see in here, guys, I just pretty much, yeah, you, you want to build your stage out of toilet paper. But seriously, though, this whole stage right here is made out of foam board. I just bought some dollar foam board from the Dollar Store or Hobby Lobby, and I used my creativity and just cut off some metallic blue sheets and just kind of threw together a stage. I cut it to shape and made a ramp. I mean, it's literally just playing around with it, being creative. Again, I wanted everything custom made. Um, you could get, you know, regular WWE play sets and then put your own logos on there. You don't have to do what I did here. That looks terrible, by the way. But you guys get the idea of what I'm going with. This is one of the Titan Tron stage play sets that I just put a green screen over for the Titan Tron. You don't have to do any of that. These are just, again, I'm just kind of running through what I do. Now for your backdrop, you could use mini figures. You could go get your background right here custom printed as my camera falls. Now my backdrop's kind of falling over, but I literally just took that image off Google, blew it up, cropped it to size, and then went to Office Depot and got them to print it out, and then I just attached it to poster board. So that's what you could use for your background. If you don't have that, you could just use crowd members. You could use a solid backdrop. I just wanted the real arena feel, you know. I really wanted to bring it to life, really immerse yourself in the arena. So that is what I did with it. So I have since finishing up Vindication, I did switch out the MDT Live announce tables over here. But you can get these these announce tables and stuff like that. If you really want to bring your setup to life, you can get the announce table play sets from Ringside Collectibles. I used Curb Stomp City decals, which we'll go into a little bit later to uh, get these custom made. He didn't make them for me. I actually had the graphics made and then got them made into stickers and then put them on my announce table. Same thing goes for the chairs. I just got custom graphics made and then I got them from Curb Stomp City Custom Decals. I'll leave a link in the description. Again, not all of this stuff is needed. Again, I just wanted to cover through some of the things that I use to help you guys out. Now, if we're getting into the camera that you may want to use, guys, I know that a lot of kids nowadays, a lot of people nowadays have a cell phone. Use your cell phone. It takes probably the best images that you could possibly make and I think they do sell pretty cheap cameras at Walmart. Walmart, like digital cameras, they may sell like fifty to a hundred dollar cameras, which is really cheap for a for a solid little camera that you may want to use. You also need an SD card to put inside of that camera. But if you don't want to spend all that, you already have your cell phone right there, man. You can use your phone your phone to take great photos. I use this to create a lot of my thumbnails. You know, you set the figures up and then bam, you just take your photos. You take your photos. You take your photos. But I actually use a Nikon DSLR thirty two hundred or Nikon D thirty two hundred, and it does pretty well for me. I I think it takes pretty solid photos. I've used it since the very beginning, have not changed cameras. I'm looking to get into a different camera. I'd like my camera quality to be a little bit better and like I'd like to have a little bit better exposure and stuff like that. So I don't know. I may play around with that for probably My Damn Nation is when we'd probably debut that, you know, just to give it a little bit different feel and stuff. But there's tons of camera options. I would say iPhone is probably the cheapest one. And then I think you can edit in iMovie. I'm not entirely sure what people use on their phone because I've never had to do that before. So you may want to get with some other people that, you know, use their phone to edit. But I use Sony Vegas. Sony Vegas is an editing software on my computer. And Sony Vegas is just a, it's a great editing program. I mean, I needed it for the channel anyway. So I used it to edit the pick feds. And it was, it's pretty expensive service. I think you could pay monthly on it. But I, I just paid like 250 or something like that straight up to be able to edit for forever, you know, on it. And I think I get free upgrades or I get upgrades for the new software at a cheaper charge. And I'm not going to, I won't 
screen cap it, but this is kind of what we're looking at. No, I'm not doing a Royal Rumble. I was doing this for a friend, so I was just kind of playing around with it, but this is kind of what it looks like here. Sorry for this glare on this left side, but this is kind of what it looks like on the screen, and you know, you can add layers and stuff like that. You can get your audio layers and your, your video layers like that, and you can, you know, you slide up and down the timeline. You can make it longer. You can add all kinds of BS in here. You can do a lot of stuff with Sony Vegas, but this is more on the expensive end. I just wanted to, again, showcase what I use to create the pick fed. Another thing, if you're doing a commentary fed, guys, you're probably going to need a mic to add in the commentary. And for me, I use a Blue Yeti mic, which is right here, which you can get at Best Buy, all these other places. Again, that's kind of an expensive option, but it will give you the best audio quality. Also, you could just use, I think, iPhone headsets. Like, if you just plug an iPhone headset into your computer, I think it works as a microphone as well, so you may be able to do that as well. I don't know. You, again, you just have to play with it. I've never had to do that, so you may just have to play around with it and stuff like that. Now, getting into, we covered the editing, we covered the pictures, we covered all of that different stuff. Now, if you if you want to get into roster and booking and how do I book and all this stuff, man, I mean, just think about it like this. When I started my pick fed, I said, you know what, man? Me and my brother are going to do these drafts. We're going to draft a roster. Like, if you only have eight people on roster, maybe you want to wait around a little bit until you build up a little bit big of a roster, or maybe you just want to have singles titles that all eight guys go after, or or maybe you want, I mean, there's the, the possibilities are endless, man. Just be creative, have fun with it. That's the biggest, most important thing, but if you're, if you have a deep roster, say if you have 30 people or 40 people or 50 people, you want to do one or two brands. I mean, there's so many different things with a pick fed, but if you just want one brand, stand alone, you have your roster, just think about what matches do I want to see? What's creative? What is a match that I would dream to see? Or what is a matchup that WWE doesn't do that I'd love to do? You know, cross promotial, Kenny Omega versus Roman Reigns, some crazy stuff like that, man. Just be creative with it, have fun with it, dream matches, book stuff like that. You know, that's the funnest part is cre the, create the creative aspect and the little details of, of pick fetting is what my favorite part is. And there's just so many different things you can do out there, bro. The, the possibilities are literally endless with what you can do. I mean, you ain't even got to use WWE figures, man. You can, you can do anything. You can literally do anything. You make your own characters. I mean, the possibilities are endless with a pick fed and what you can do. But hold a draft to start or don't hold a draft. Just start out with your champions or do a tournament to crown your champions. I mean, again, Again, there's so many things that you could possibly do. Now, as far as custom titles and ring skirts and all of these different things, my buddy Nate makes my ring skirts. I'll put a link in the description and I'll also put up his, his Twitter handle. You can go hit him up there possibly. He is an absolute beast and he makes all of my MDT ring skirts. He makes them for all different ring sizes. It doesn't have to be the Jack's Real Scale ring. He can do it for the Authentic Scale ring. He His work is top quality, no doubt about it, and I highly recommend him. Now, as far as title belts, now, I had to get mine made by a customizer who no longer does them anymore, so any MDT belts and stuff like this, I mean, I don't know, like, if I ever wanted new ones, I don't know who I would hit up. I don't know if I have a friend or something that could do them, but you may have to make your own, just, you know, custom paint them and stuff, but you don't have to use custom belts. I just wanted to, you know, it's just one of those things that I wanted to do. I had a vision for my fed and I wanted to make it happen. So that's what I did here. But you can use WWE titles. You can use their regular titles. Again, for these mics, I just got the mics from the Ringside Collectibles play sets. This is the blue version. I think they come with the announce table desk and then the black version come with the other announce table desk. You know, if you order a few of those, whatever, you get the mics for free. Then I just hit up Curb Stomp with my, with my graphics that I custom made and then he got them put on these mics and then I just stuck them on there and I, that's how you get the custom graphics and mics and all of these different things man it's just now if you don't have the money for all of that maybe you want to paint your logo on your mics if you wanted to I, I, I don't know exactly again my pick fed has a, a lot more like in depth and customization and stuff to it that maybe not a lot of people want to go through maybe you don't want to go through that amount of detail or maybe you just don't care to and you want to use WWE stuff use WWE stuff man that's fantastic you could easily do that you don't have to do any of the things I said in this thing you really all you need to do when pick fetting is have figures, a camera, and I, I guess that's pretty much it, man. You don't really need a ring if you want to do a freaking a stovetop pick fed or whatever the hell you want to do, man. The, the, the possibilities are endless. Now, the most important thing when it comes to pick fetting, to me at least, is going to be your posing. Like, posing super important, man, and I say if you want to get better at posing, I would say first off, release a few shows first or, you know, just get better at it, but if you want to see how a move is specifically posed or you want to see how something is created, I say go to your favorite creators, Harrison. You got AWF. You got Steinsenberg slash Team Rated CDS. W3A. G Natty. My man Balor Figs UK. Prime Wrestling is another one out there, man. There's just so many damn pick feds out there that do great work 
when when posing. There's so many dudes that are amazing at posing on YouTube, and if you don't know how to pose something, man, you can go back and watch their shows, learn how to pose. I mean, even if you want, you can watch my shows if you want and see how I, see how I pose something. I mean, there's just so many guys out there that can pose their ass off, and they do such a great job at posing. Try your best to replicate that as you improve. Now, don't dissect your posing and be like, oh, I have to have every pose exactly perfect when you first start off, because you're going to probably suck at posing when you first start off, man. Your, your old shows are going to be cringy to watch, but if you just take that first step forward, get started on it, over time you will get better at it, and again, watching other feds definitely helps you out, and uh, there's just a lot better people out there that can explain posing to you, but my, my posing has definitely improved simply from just practice and also checking out other people, see how they did it, and being like, yeah, I can kind of see that, and you know, another thing that you can do if you don't want to watch other feds is you can go on Google, type in Finn Balor Coup de Gras GIF, or Coup de Gras GIF, or RKO GIF, and then watch the GIFs over and over, or watch a video of the move over and over, and slowly pose it one by one, you know, figure out what frame rate you want to use. I use 0.73 to 0.78, and sometimes I even go longer than that, depending on the scene and selling and all of these different elements that come into my Fed and commentary and all that BS, but I think that's all the things I wanted to answer here, man. There's probably some other things that I could have covered, but I tried my best to cover the uh, the basis of a pick fetting and the tips and just everything that surrounds the MDT pick fed, but I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. I'm going to go eat some lanch. Hopefully, it's a good lanch, and yeah, I'm getting out of here, guys. Let me know what you think of everything down in the comments section below. If you learned something, if there's any other questions that you guys have, please let me know down in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer them, and I will go forward with that, and then, uh, yeah, I'll just answer them the best that I possibly can, but I hope you guys did enjoy the pick fetting tips video. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Before we get out of here, let's get into our random shout out. This shout out is going to go to NYC Edwin, so I guess it's New York City Edwin, maybe? Prediction. You see where the AEW figures are on that shelf? I bet KO is going to jump off of it, and then uh, some other people are like, yeah, I think so, Brad. I don't know, man. You never know what the hell an MDT show is gonna be is gonna be cooking up there, Brad, but why the hell would you add a balcony if you're not gonna plummet from that balcony? But huge shout-out to NYC Edwin for that comment. I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Don't cross the line, or you'll end up getting plummeted off a balcony like Seth Rollins did. Wait, I didn't get thrown from the balcony. Yeah. You crossed the line I've been